Hello guys, full time at the Emirates Stadium was a few hours ago now. I've been in the pub since then. You may detect that my vocal cords are feeling the strain of a momentous day. Um, a lot of talking, a lot of singing, a lot of shouting, a lot of celebrating. Arsenal 3, Tottenham 1. Um, but I know the sound quality on, on the whistle is renowned for being somewhat poor. It's even poorer today because my vocal cords are disintegrating, whatever it is that they do. But it was worth it. Fantastic afternoon at the Emirates Stadium. Uh, I flew back from my holiday in Mallorca pretty much especially for this game. Flight was delayed, was worried I wasn't going to make it. Did in the end, and so glad I did. Can't remember many occasions at the Emirates Stadium I've enjoyed more. I think obviously the fact that we had the pandemic, this was the first derby since then, the fact that we won, the fact that it felt like liftoff for this season and for this team potentially, just made it almost euphoric. And I wasn't working, um, so I was able to kind of head straight to the pub, see friends, see family. I loved it. I had a brilliant time. And that first 45 minutes that Arsenal produced was sensational. It really was. I need to watch it back in more depth. I think when I do, I'll be thrilled at how well Arsenal played. I think they were practically pass perfect in that first 45 minutes. Scored three fantastic goals. Um, Steamrolled Tottenham. And I'll be honest, from half time, I just sort of wanted the game to be over. Because I knew that, you know, it's a derby. Spurs have got to come out, they've got to fight, they've got to play for pride. I know that it's an awkward position sometimes to be in. How do you control the game? How do you remain secure while still taking risks? Um, I, I kind of thought the best case scenario for Arsenal was probably that a 3-0 win. I didn't see them being able to push on and get five or six. I just didn't think Tottenham would permit that. Um, and, and subsequently, the second half I sort of didn't enjoy, you know, I kind of was just willing the game to be over so I could revel in the win. But wow, that first 45 minutes was fantastic, sensational, I'm going to say. And to have, you know, Emil Smith-Rowe and Bukai Saka, Saka and Emil Smith-Rowe, as the crowd sang time after time, at the heart of it was perfect. You know, Emil Smith-Rowe on Twitter, he said this is the best day of his life, I believe him. Scored in the derby to open scoring, set up the goal for Aubameyang brilliantly as well. Worked tirelessly. Hats off to Mikel Arteta, he got his selection right today. You know, a lot of discussion about would he bring Granit Xhaka back in. If he did, who would he leave out? He left out Pepe, big call, given the threat, the end product he provides. Played Saka off the right, it worked a treat. Smith Rowe from the left, superb too. And Granit Xhaka, to his credit, had a very good game until his injury. Hopefully that's not too bad. Um, I, I just thought Arteta got his selection spot on today and he reaped the benefits of previous selections. You know, he made sweeping changes for that Norwich game and he's been richly rewarded for doing so. The back five he put in place has really stood firm. Uh, Hugely impressive performers in there today. Ben White had his best game in an Arsenal shirt. Uh, Tommy Asu, again, excellent. You know, Arsenal were in talks to sign Emerson, who ultimately went Spurs. He wasn't selected to start today. Arteta wanted Tommy Asu because he believed he was a better fit for the system. Well, we saw that today. He slotted in so perfectly and was excellent again. I know Son scored in the second half, but I think Spurs made a terrible mistake putting Son out on Tommy Asu's flank because he got very little change out of him, uh, certainly up until that point. And one thing I, I must say I loved about when Arsenal did concede is how gutted they were just to ship one goal, you know. Uh, Ramsdale kind of pounding the ground and throwing his hands out to have conceded his first Premier League goal for Arsenal. That's the attitude you want in your defenders. And when things got a little bit dicey towards the end, there were some good interventions, including a stunning, stunning save from Ramsdale um, to tip one onto the bar, I think, from Son as well. So we held out. We did enough in the second half. We might have uh, made slightly more of the opportunities we had on the break, but 
I don't want to pick the bones out of that. I'd rather talk about the flowing football we played in the first half. Harry Kane's part in it with a couple of glaring errors. Um, you know, the bravery we had to play out from the back at times. Partey making himself available in the midfield. Smith Rowe and Saka running into space, driving at defenders. Really just was excellent to see. And we actually finished this game with all six of our summer signings on the field. A lot of people sort of scoffed at Arsenal's window and said, have they improved their options? I think you have to say that they have. And maybe people didn't expect what we've seen from Tomiyasu, what we've seen from Ramsdale, what we've seen from Lukonga, for example, coming off the bench. Even Tavares today uh, made a big impact with that physicality. I mean, being able to bring on Lukonga, Maitland Niles, Tavares, you end with a very different physical profile on the field. Can't underestimate what that does for a squad and what that can do for a team in the space of 90 minutes. Um, look, I could eulogise about them all. Maybe I will. Ramsdale <sighs> has exceeded all expectations, is a darling of the supporters. The connection he has with them is something pretty special. And if you've been in the Emirates Stadium this season or at one of the away games, you will have observed that. Um, I think he's also performing extremely well. And what he showed today is something we haven't seen thus far, shot-stopping ability, which is another string to his bow. Tommy Asu, the Japanese Ivanovic, as I'm calling him, a no-nonsense, no-frills right back, who is technically adept, two good feet, perfect for the system, a team player. Kieran Tierney is Kieran Tierney. Tireless, you know, embodies everything you would want to see from an Arsenal footballer, really, in terms of his commitment, his passion, his quality as well. Gabriel, going from strength to strength, looks set up for a big second season, having been in and out last year. Ben White, I think has shown against Burnley and against Spurs, he can defend. He has quality on the ball. Did we pay too much for him? Maybe, but we needed somebody. And I think, you know, White, Ramsdale, Gabriel, that time in the international break that Arteta had with that trio, how valuable could that have been kind of mini pre-season. Um, I think it's been hugely valuable. Granit Xhaka, he, he is inevitable in every respect. Inevitable that he'll have his moments and blow up and be sent off or make a major error. And inevitable that he will come back from, from it. He will be picked and he will have a run of good form. I hope injury doesn't interrupt that from him. I think him and Party as the kind of experienced heart of the team can offer a lot. Thomas Partey, the best midfield player Arsenal have had in a very long time. In a very long time. Probably since Cesc Fabregas. I don't think that's overstating it. Um, he is top quality. We are fortunate. As a team without European football, we are very fortunate to have that player in our ranks. Uh, ahead of that, Martin Odegaard blows me away, to be honest. His technical quality, his work rate. I think this team belongs to Thomas Partey and Martin Odegaard. There. You know, Saka and Smith-Rowe, the young English boys, we love them. Aubameyang, the finisher. Partey and Smith-Rowe have the keys to this team for the next three years. I th Partey and Odegaard, sorry to correct myself. Smith Rowe too, he can have a key. He can have a spare key. Um, Smith Rowe, I, I, they deserve to be done individually, but just to say about Smith Rowe and Saka, talk about transfers all you want. What would these guys be worth on the open market? We'd be talking for the pair, certainly north of 100 million. I think that will only increase We've got to be very grateful for the foundations laid in the academy a long time ago that have enabled us to produce players like that. And I'm delighted to see them flourishing in the way that they are. And Aubameyang played like a leader today. Challenged for high balls, scored a goal, was dangerous, reproduced that iconic celebration. I'll just touch quickly on Mikel Arteta as well. I'm really thrilled for him. I know that people think uh, I'm not critical enough of Arteta at times. Uh, and believe me, I interrogate that in myself. I think 
that some of the criticism of him after the Man City game at the start we had was a little hyperbolic. I do think there are a lot of mitigating factors. But he did need to change things, and he did do that. He was pretty bold in the signings he made and pushed for, and in how quickly and how swiftly he introduced them to the team. He has been rewarded for that boldness. And I have never seen him as animated or as thrilled as he was as when those first half goals went in on the touchline. He was overcome. And I think we always think about the players missing the fans and not feeling that connection. But Arteta has been in that position too. And today you kind of feel the incredible atmosphere passing through him like a current. Um, I'm really pleased for him that he got this win. He needed it. He needed all these results, Norwich, Burnley, Spurs. He needs a few more. But he's made big strides. He's, he's steadied the ship, you know. Uh, obviously, we need more than that. But there's a lot to be encouraged about, isn't there? Such a young team. So exciting looking forward. I hope this is going to be the year that we, you know, step up back into that top six. I really, really do. If it's not, it's going to be soon with these players. I really think it is. We are, we've got a fantastic group to build around. And they're just immensely likeable. I want to finish off by saying happy birthday to Andrew Mangan of Ars Blog. Um, 50 today, what a day to celebrate it. I'm glad the players toasted him with their performance. Uh, and I'll be chatting to him on the Ask Cost Extra tomorrow. Um, and have break off as well with uh, Ian Stone and a couple of others. But until then, I'll leave it there. Sorry about the blue background, by the way. It was the best I could do in the circumstances. North London's red, don't forget it. <laughs>